Okay, welcome back. This is the next block cycle, uh, the next lesson. We're going to be looking at the hash table. What you see here are key value pairs right now. So key and value pairs were for looking up items. This is the hash table logic that we're going to be dealing with right now. So let's see how we're going to work on this. Of course, we're going to bring in some Python as well. Okay. Um, so the thing is with uh, the hash table, we can condense large amounts of data into a fixed sized hash value. So the thing is, as we work on this, like for example, one is a key. 20 is a value, so we want to be able to hash those keys into something uh, that can be compressed and deterministic, and it adds an extra layer of security by swapping and hashing, and the hashing will provide a new value, a new key, right? So uh, this can, you know, so when we're dealing with the, with the compression, we can have more efficient C to the process and work with the data uh, more effectively. So we can be a little bit more deterministic on what we're getting and ensure that the same signature is produced for the same message every time uh, as we look look up items. We want consistency, reliability, security. Um, so, you know, the message integrity, like I mentioned, prevent attacks and long, uh, length extension attacks and things like that. So when we're dealing with hash table logic, keys and value, key value pairs, um, we're using hashing, okay, when we're dealing with the algorithm to enhance efficiency, security, and integrity by compressing data, right? We want, you know, integrity and, and, and we want to determine the output, consistency, adding extra layer of security, ensuring message integrity, like I just said, preventing the, you know, length extension attacks and being more secure. Okay. Uh, so that's what we're looking for. That's what we're looking at right now. Uh, key value pairs. Let's talk about it. Um, some more hash table logic. I'm glad you've made it back with me. We've been working a lot, uh, working on a lot of searching here uh, lately. Uh, in this uh, particular course. Um, so again, welcome back. My name is Coder J. This is the JCS Computer Science Channel. This channel is designed to deliver to you as much information on computer science uh, as possible here, as much information as I can find and gather uh, per cycle to increase your learning capacity in as many iterations as possible. Uh, again, I'm in the v, uh, I'm in the virtual computer lab every day, gathering more and more of this information as things evolve um, with my team. Okay, I, I work directly with uh, our scientist. Um, Mouse is our research scientist, so we work together. And there are other departments in the in the uh, admin building, and I'm on the second floor. This is the virtual space right here where we work to harness that knowledge. And here's where we solve problems within the relevant logic. Okay. So let's continue with this algorithms course and look at the hash table logic from within the space. Okay. So one is a key 20 is value that we, that we might want to look up. Two is a key, 70 is a value. 42 is a key, 80 is a value. 14 is a key, 90 is a value. So we want to have, um, in other words, what we're looking at right here, keys and values, we want those keys to have unique indexes because sometimes, you know, those keys can overlap and, you know, there could be, uh, 
it's some kind of duplication going on. So what I mentioned earlier about the integrity and the you know having a unique key, if you will. And that's pretty much what it is, right? So um, you know, we're so we're gonna store it in some kind of data, some kind of um collection, like I say, and it's similar to an array. So we're gonna convert those key values into a range of indexes that are unique. So we've got uh, a size of four here. And there's a hash function that we're gonna to apply to each of those keys. Okay, so we're gonna you know, use the remainder to help us out. Okay. Let's use the remainder by find well let's find the remainder and we're gonna we're gonna find the remainder using a uh, hash function which is the modulus operator so in this, for this for this first um, item in this collection here the key is one and we're just gonna hash it using the modulus operator one uh, modulus one modulus 20 equals one. Okay. So the, the remainder of uh, one divided by 20. So mo one modulus, I'm sorry, two modulus 70 Okay, we'll get these uh, values here. Um, uh, seven. Actually, you know, we want, you know, we need to choose a different value. Uh, let's try. Yeah, I'm here with mouse. I mean, we're working uh, for the best uh, result on these algorithms. Twenty is not the best hash um, uh, formula right now. It's uh, what I've um, been told here. Okay, so let's let's think it through again. We're not prone, you know, we are prone to mistakes here. Okay, so we're we're working together. I'm in the virtual lab. I mean, I'm here, you know, you know, in the admin building, second floor. I mean, go, go poke around the site. Go to the homepage and see what you can do to support um, the virtual school here, the virtual channel. The JCS Computer Science channel, and see what you can do, and see if you, you know how you can support the channel and, and all that. <clears throat> so, uh, my research scientist, what what uh, Mouse would do is he would take the actual collection, the four items. It's a size of four, so we want um, the formula. You know, he's the scientist, I'm the coder, so. <laughs> um, you know, even though I, I have math in my own right, you get the idea, all right? So anyway, so one um, in modulus four, okay? Two uh, modulus four, Um, and 42 modulus four and 14 modulus, uh, four. So we can calculate, get the remainder of, you know, what these are. Um, okay. So we can calculate. Uh, to get the uh, remainder to do. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Feel free um, to do um, long division on this to try to get the remainder. Grab a calculator if you need to. Um, and, you know, let's try to find the remainder. The remainder is going to kind of drive the hash function to give us a unique index. That's the whole point. Yeah, that's what we're, what we're doing here. 
so according to my calculations here in the virtual computer lab, um, here in the science department, one modulus four is one, two modulus four is two, 42 modulus four is two, 14 modulus four is two. All right, so let me, um, okay, so it's one, two, two, and two, okay? So let me update our virtual space because we're here, you know, in the virtual space. So one, uh, two, uh, two, and two. Okay. So the problem here is that these indexes that we got from the modulus calculation are not unique. Um, they're not unique. So we have to do something a little bit more. Okay. And we're going to continue to work on this. Uh, so let's work together. Okay. So we have, we don't have unique uh, index values here that we hashed or, you know, use the modulus for the remainder of, for the hash function itself. Yeah, they, you know, they all go hand in hand. Um, so what we have to do is take a look at all those unique, those non-unique uh, number twos there. And it's a size of four. So we have to do the next uh, thing, if you will, that we have to do in the logic, right? We, you know, in the in the process to you know solve this and get the logic to you in as many iterations as possible. Um. So that's what what this is. So the next thing we have to do here is do a thing called linear probing to get those guys to become unique and get them out of that little you know, um, t entanglement that they're in right there. So we need, you know, to say, okay, in other words, linear probe to search the next empty location. Okay. Until we find an empty um, location within the collection, linear probing. All right, so uh, let's look. Let's take a look. All right, so let's see. So um, we have what we have here is three and four are available. It's that simple. So after linear, linearly probing here, we just say three and four. That's it. Okay. Cut because they're simply available and ready to go. All right. So we're just going to uh, find that index and assign it. We'll, we'll probably see that in code. Here in, a, here in a minute. So now we're good. We got a, you know, a collection of four items uh, for the hash table. We use modulus for the hash function. We got our remainder. We, we did our linear probe and got one, two, three, four. So, uh, so it's index one. Okay. For the key. Like that, two, and 70, see, three and 80, four and 90, okay, four and 90, so, uh, so there it is, okay. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four in nice and unique and received from the hash function with their value. So key, 
in value pairs using unique indexing from a hash function that has provided that to us nicely. Um, so let's go ahead now and implement the, the hash table logic in Python. Okay, so now we're here in the REPL, in the Python REPL to implement the hash table logic. Okay, so think about what we did and what we have to do to get the index for, you know, what to do to the, do with a hash function to, to do the, to get the unique index. Um, and now we're here. So make sure that you get a REPL up and we were working together at this point. We're gonna do the complete implementation of this hash table logic. We need a constant variable of, I wanna say four, but we'll just actually go with 20. All right, so our you know, research scientist here um, with, you know, with the documentation says, hey, uh, let's just go with 20 for a bigger data set, if you will, all right, like that. So there's our data, here's our constructor, and some data and a key, okay? This is all standard for this particular type of class and using this type of Dealing with that, dealing with the hash table. This is you know certain a particular type of style for Python you know to implement this type of problem. Okay, um, it's you know it's a coding pattern if you will. Now, other languages have different patterns, but this is Python that we're dealing with. Still okay, so now. Where are we at this point? Well, okay, we have a class. Yep, okay, and we're gonna head back to the margin and work with an array here, which is going to be a collection, as a matter, as a matter of fact. We call ours a collection here. And there is going to be some variable item okay calling out to the class and item equals nothing let's define that hash code here's a function on the margin Okay, so let's return the key size and then begin begin to search is to find the search where the key is. And we want the hash index to call out to the key, which is the function there. Okay, hash, okay. And then uh, what we wanna do here, hash collection, of the hash index is not null. If the hash collection dot key then return that hash collection Then 
We do our calculation. That is that hash function that we were just working on um, here in Python. So we want to do, if the key equals a key, then return that hash index from the collection. Other than that, we have to recalculate it was one modulus size of collection plus one until in the loop until you find an empty spot, right? So we, we found three and four were empty. If three wasn't empty, then it would have, it would have jumped to the next empty spot. Okay. Okay, so that's that. That's what's going on there. Um, so what do we want to do is return none and go from there. So we want to say, okay, you know, we probably want to, now probably display it. We want to see it. So that's what we did, right? We want to display it, obviously. So, you know, we could search. Okay, so we did our search right there and uh, now we just want to display it. Uh, it's pretty much it at this point. So display for i in range of the size if hash collection of the counter is not nothing is not null. Then print the key value here. See, uh, let me not format. All right, um, dot key. Okay, so hash collection of i dot data okay let's go let's go all the way down here So we want that to enclose. All right, that's fine. So else all right. And we'll see how that how that plays out. Now we can go to the margin. Let's talk to the main function here. That this is the main, you know, the entry point of the program. And um, all 
And that can be something we can put there. So we can search. All right. So we're going to need um, an insert function as well. because we need to add items to it itself. All right, so we'll add some items, we'll insert some items, you know, get, uh, get our list going, get the hash table going. Okay, so now let's go ahead and we have a key, we have some data. Item equals data, item, data, key, hash index equals hash code of key. So while uh, hash collection of hash index is not none, okay, and hash collection of hash index dot key not equal to negative one, then we can begin to build some kind of table of values. Right, so uh, this is our data class. And that is going to be Our formula for traversing for for a unique hash of hash index equals the item okay so let's see that Uh, that can be, uh, we'll check on that here in a second. I believe that we indent there. All right, so, you know, it's coming together as we can begin to insert some things into the main um, function. So again, I'm here in the virtual computer lab and we are working with the hash table logic right now. Um, so let's insert some values. All right, so let's go down a little, a little bit and try to display something. Our display was here. All right, so for our data and our hash, hash collection and our search. Okay, so you know, let's try it. Okay, okay. So what I did was I went ahead and added uh, some more items to kind of quicken things up a little bit. Uh, so that's what we have. We've got you know those key values right right there, keys of values. So let's try to get something onto the console. 
uh, you know, according to this hash table here, uh, and this, and what we're dealing with with the hash table logic right now. Uh, so uh, we want to display a couple things and try to search for something in there. So we'll display, right? And then we'll search for 90. If item is not none, print item, you know, item dot data. Not found. Uh, let's see here. We can do item equals search 42. And 42 is there. So we should be able to get The, the data, right? So we should be able to see those two. You know, in the console, hopefully, and we are not prone to not making mistakes or getting errors. So we'll see what it gives us here in real time. All right, so we got something. We got um, the hash table itself. And 90 is not found. And 80 with a key of 42. Okay, a uh, key of 42 gives us, gives us a value of 80. So hence, we found 80 in our hash table lookup a unique key, a unique key of 42. So that's the gist of our hash table logic, okay? I'll see you next time.